Jesus is Lord, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and He loves you. From the beautiful Sun City of West Texas, Life Christian Television presents Good News from El Paso. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the Lord. He is God Almighty who took flesh, came into the world to relieve us of the pain we were in. He died, he rose again, and he says he's coming again, and he is coming again. This is the good news we are bringing to you from the pastor. Therefore, let not your heart be troubled. The Bible tells us be strong in the Lord and by the power of his might. Get someone to watch this program, to watch this good news, and it's going to help you. And whoever introduced to watch this program, God bless you again. Welcome to Good News from a Pastor. Honey, please, can you welcome our wonderful audience? Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. You made the right decision. God bless you. This is Good News from a Pastor with the good news that Jesus Christ is still Lord in all the situations. Thank you. Again, let us go to the Lord, our God, through the name of Jesus Christ in prayer. Father, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this audience. We thank you for your anointing on our life. That is also what we are going to discuss today. And it's going to help the hearers fire up their faith and let them know that they're children of God and that you are giving them this earth to live and enjoy. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we give you all the glory. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Our topic today is this. While men slept. While men slept. We are going to look at some scripture before we get into that program today. The first scripture we are going to look, at, look into is Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 25. Honey, please, can you read it? Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, Jesus is saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in, the, in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. While he was sleeping, his enemies came and sowed tares and left. Let's look at another uh, uh, verse there, another uh, scripture there, honey. Chapter, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5. What does it say? He that gathered in summer is a wise son, but he that sleeps in harvest is a son that caused shame. You see, when it is harvest time and you are sleeping, <laughs> you call shame to yourself because whatever you planted is going to rot in the field because you never harvested it. Another scripture we are going to read is Proverbs chapter, chapter 9. Uh, this is, uh, no, chap Proverbs chapter 6, verses 9 to 11, and it says, How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep. A little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall your poverty come as one that travels, and your want as an armed man. Warning about sleeping. We look at this as physical sleeping. The what God is, you see, God is spiritual and life is spiritual. So we are going to deal with sleeping spiritually and the consequences of it. Right, honey? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what is happening when men are sleeping? What's going on? So, when men are sleeping, you know what that means? Sleeping. Sleep is sleep. Whether you are sleeping physically or you are sleeping spiritually. So, we are talking about, you can look at it on both sides. Because we are in this world, though we are not of this world. So, when men sleep, have you seen soldiers sleeping on the post? Sleeping on duty? Have you seen anyone, let's say you went to work and you, you are given assignment to do at your desk and then the boss comes and then you are not doing the work but you are sleeping. What happens? It's not a good thing at all. Sometime, I mean, a few weeks ago, somebody was testifying that he was driving. Suddenly, sleep came into his eyes. He started sleeping and God, by his grace, in a split second, saved him from a serious accident. That sleep is not, uh, it's not natural sleep. It is of the devil. Therefore, if anybody is sleeping on duty, they will be fired. Yeah, they will be fired. 
the soldier sleeping on, uh, uh, at mm -hmm. his post, he will be caught marshaled. Caught marshaled in case he was sleeping and then there was an attack and place, the place was destroyed or the enemy came and destroyed what he was guarding or security guard. Instead of doing your work, you're sleeping. No, you, you, you will not be there another day. So it is important that as we, the Christians, are in this world, we cannot afford to sleep. Because what happens is you have serious damages. Now, what happens in the nighttime? Sleep is supposed to be at night most of the time. How God, that's how God made it. So evil happens in the nighttime. Most of the evil things. You see the witches and wizards and all that, they are more operative in the night Why men sleep. And they are putting things in the air in your life, in your neighborhood. Okay? So spiritual things happen in the nighttime. That's why God says, watch and pray. Be alert. And we cannot afford to sleep and then have the enemy taking over everywhere. So at night, while men are sleeping, activities are happening, spiritually especially. And of course, you know, those that are, that are drunk and those that are doing partying, party, whatever they do in the nighttime, you know, most of them are not clean. Because at the end of the day, what did God say? Whatever is done in the nighttime, in darkness, they will be surely exposed in the daytime. So it is important that we do like Jesus. He went and prayed all night. Let us pray. Let us stay awake and pray as much as we can, nighttime, daytime, all the time. You go, when do I get to rest? You, are, you will get your rest. Okay? So that is because of what Jesus has shown us. The devil copied it. And they are doing it diligently. But we, the Christians, we need to arise and sleep in, at the time when we're supposed to sleep and be alert in the nighttime, in the, in the daytime, all the time. Right, honey, right, honey, yes. You may ask, now my wife said you may ask a question. When do I get to sleep? When do I get to rest? Never. Why did God destroy the first world with water? He said because the thoughts of your house were continually evil. So they were not sleeping. So all the, everything in their heart, everything they were thinking was evil. So if the thought in their heart was continually evil, so the thought in their heart can be continually good. So as long as the, heart, the thoughts in their heart are continually good, you are not sleeping. It's just as simple as that. So you ask them, what does it mean, spiritually, that a, 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 a child of God is sleeping? When you're not reading your Bible, when you get up from day to day, month to month, you never open a, 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 a chapter in the Bible to read. Bro, sister, you are sleeping. And you are giving the enemy the advantage. This is the only weapon you have. Your weapon against all the fiery darts of the enemy is the word of God. Now, if you are not familiar or you are not working with that word, you are sleeping. When you, because of that, you don't know who Jesus is. And because you don't know who Jesus is, you, you are sleeping. In fact, some people say miracles. Are, a, a person sent me something just yesterday. Amazing. This is a 71-year-old woman. Got pregnant and gave birth. She did not even know. She was pregnant until after some time. After 71 years, she gave birth. That kid is about three years old now. So it just happened. This is not something that happened in the 18th century or 16th century. This just happened a few years ago. God is still alive. God is, God is alive and will alive, be, be alive forever. So if you are not reading your Bible, if you are not familiar with the name, that powerful name of Jesus Christ, if you don't have confidence in that name, you are sleeping. When you have doubts in your heart and have fears, which means you don't trust God, you don't believe in him, you don't rely on God. Like we said, like we said last time in one of our programs, David had everything a, king, a person could think of, not to talk of a king. The whole country was under him. 
The whole army was his army. He had enough money to put enough money for his child to build a temple with gold and everything for 46 years. And yet, devil would go and sit down and say, Lord, I trust you. David. De I'm sorry, David did not depend on his army. David did not depend on what he got from the countries he conquered. David said, Lord, in you I put my trust. So his mind was continually on Christ, on God. So David was always awake. So when a, a priest starts praying, that is the most dangerous place any Christian can find him or herself in. Because the enemy will make sure you don't pray. If you are watching a movie on Disney, you can stay away for hours and watch that movie and laugh. But as soon as you want to go to your bed, after the movie is over, you say, okay, let sleep comes. The enemy will make sure you don't pray. Because he knows as long as you don't pray, the night time has come for his witches to put their spells on you. And so he'll get you through. So you get up the next morning, everything is going south or west or whatever. Because you didn't pray, you were sleeping. Not just physically, but spiritually, you've been asleep. So the enemy will come at night to sow tests. What does it mean? Is at that time that you are sleeping, at that time that you are not reading your Bible, at that time that the thought of your heart is evil, you are not thinking of how to help people, you are not thinking of how to contribute to the society, you are not thinking of how to make this place a, a, a wonderful place. Your thought is how to revenge, how to do evil, how to do some, something that will bring evil to the society. You are sleeping. And at that moment, the enemy has it all over you. So you better be careful. At that moment, you are opening your life, leaving your life open to witches and wizards. Because that's what they want, an open channel. Because if there's light in you, darkness cannot come in. But if that darkness is in you, then the agents of darkness have an opportunity to do whatever thing they want to do. That's when the thought of stealing comes in. People go to robbery at night. People get drunken at night. Most of the adulterous sins committed are at night, those physical nights. Then imagine the spiritual night, because what those things you are carrying out at a physical night are the things you have already committed in their spiritual night. When you were not praying, when you were not reading the Bible, when Christ was far away from you. So my brothers and sisters, arise. The Bible says, arise. It's about time that we arise and stop sleeping. Right, honey? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Lord help us. Actually, see, we the humans, we do what we want to do. You set yourself an alarm if you have to. You leave yourself notes here and there if you need to to remind you of what you need to do. We have this gadget called telephone. You can set alarm on the phone and say, okay, by this time in the midnight, I wake up. And then by, you can do what you choose to do. And that's the, the choice we have. God has given us this choice. Imagine giving a child a choice to drive a car, a, 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 a child that doesn't even know how to read or write yet. That's a disaster. See, God has given us this choice. And um, unfortunately, some of us are not, a lot of us are not using these choices properly. We don't even know what choice we are making. We, you make choices that hurt you in the, at the end of the day. So ask the Holy Spirit to help you choose right. Make the right choices. Use wisdom in, in your life. As a Christian, we have wisdom. We, have, we, have, we are righteous because we have Christ in us. So let us know that number one thing is this. There is a consequence for our behaviors. If you're sleeping, 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 and remember the devil pulls spells with his, uh, and, uh, I mean demons and witches and wizards. They put spells out there, and you don't allow those spells to rest on you. And that's why you need to continue to cancel everything that they're putting in the atmosphere. Cancel them. So what do you do? Consequences that misfortunes will start happening. You wake up one day and then you didn't go to sleep uh, sick, sick. You wake up sick. You wake up, you, did, you, can exp you know what I'm talking about. So refuse, and what do we need to do? We, we declare the word of God. Actually, you know, praying is good, 
But are, you, are we praying the word of God? Are we praying according to the word of God? Or are we praying what we are feeling according to our circumstances, according to what is going on in our world? So when we pray according to the word of God, the Holy Spirit just put that in my spirit. He says, pray the word of God. When you pray the word of God, whether you are going to sleep or waking up or anywhere you are, then angels are all around you. They are sent to carry those words out. Because God has no obligation to carry out your word, but his word that you speak. Hallelujah, I received that. So misfortunes happen when people are sleeping. And do you know what has happened? You don't even know the truth. Deception. You receive deception here and there. Because you are not studying the word of God. You don't know, you don't do your own research to find out what is happening in your, in your land. You believe everything any, any, anybody says on the TV. You believe any lie that comes out there. And God is saying, arise and be wise. Be alert. Do not sleep. Don't succumb to the lies of the enemy. Hear what God is saying. Hear what God is saying today. Hear what God is saying today. Our lives are to, be, are to make a difference. Make impact. Change things. Instead, we are being buffeted here and there. So that's the work of the devil. And what do we need to do now? Refuse. Really refuse. If you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, refuse and rise up and say, okay, Lord, I surrender my weakness to you. I surrender my sleepy head to you. I say, Holy Spirit, help me. And right now, as a Christian, take authority and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, Satan and your devils, I cast you out. No spell can work. Whatever you speak right there, according to the word of God, is so. Wonderful, my dear. I know some of you will be wondering, okay, how do I pray the word of God? Praying the word of God is simply saying what God says about you. God says you are sanctified. Just say, thank you, Father, I'm sanctified. I'm justified. Thank you, Father, that I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And because of that, I'm saved. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Father, that I have the power to get wealth and everything I'm doing is prospering. Father, I thank you that there are angels around about me and nothing shall by any means hurt me. Thank you, Father, that I have the power to heal the sick. I have the power to raise the dead. I have the power to cast out demons. You are praying the word of God. You are saying what God says about you, about your circumstance. Thank you, Father, that you are with those who are ruling our country and that their spirit is guiding them in all their ways. That's the word of God you are praying. So, and what you have to do now is find a good church. When I mean a good church, that's a church, a believing church that preaches the word of God and not only preaches the word of God, but believes in what they're preaching. You see, the word of God says, by his stripes we are healed. You go to a church and they say, yeah, by his stripes we are healed. You say, yeah, everybody's happy. But they don't tell you how to develop your spirit and live by that word and the healing power of God made manifest in your life. So they believe what God is saying, but they don't believe in the power thereof. In some of the churches, they say, ah, time of miracles have passed. Because they believe there is God. But they don't believe in the power of God to perform those miracles in one's life today. So run away from such churches. Like we said last time, those are just groups. Those are just clubs. The power of God is not believed in. The name of Jesus Christ is not relied on. The glory of God is not trusted. So get, get away from those churches. They may have 10 million or 10,000. It doesn't mean a thing. Because God is looking for one person who will stand between, between the gap. You can be that one person. That's what God needs. So look for a good church. A church that believes in healing. A church that believes in the power of God to prosper. A church that believes in the power of God to guide you in all your ways. A church that believes in the power of God to keep you from sinning. Because the Bible said you keep your, foot from, your feet from falling. Go to such a church. Believe God. Trust him. And see the wonderful things that will happen in your life. So today we are, we are advising you, encouraging you rather, brothers and sisters, trust God. Believe in God. Wake up. Like he said in uh, St. Thessalonians uh, chapter 5 verse 7, verse 17. Pray 
without ceasing. Let every thought of your heart be prayer, because every good thought in your heart is prayer. The prayer is not just when you go sit down or kneel down or stand up and raise your hand, no. If you are walking in the street, you are praying. You are thinking of how to do good. You love God. You think about the good things Jesus Christ did. You think about this, the sacrifice he made for you on the cross. You appreciate the beautiful way we are living in, the beautiful flowers, the wonderful uh, birds, the beautiful sky. When you are thinking of all those things, you are praying. You are meditating on the word of God. You are meditating on God. That is prayer. So don't cease from praying. Pray always. You are going to bed. Think of the goodness of the Lord. Think that you are going to have, believe the good dreams you are going to have. And you are going to wake up in the next day praying. Because the Bible says for us to pray everywhere. A house lifted or a house lifted without ceasing. So be a praying person wherever you are. In whatever situation you, you have find yourself, pray. Right? Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you for helping us. Your people are willing, but there's, there's, the flesh is weak. So this flesh will bring them under subjection to the obedience of Christ now by the blood of Jesus. My sisters and brothers, let's add fasting. Fasting is good for you. It's good for your health. Fasting brings your mind under subjection. Fasting brings your flesh under subjection. Fasting is good for you. Fa put, add fast to your praying. Add fast. You say fast, yes. Fast food. Fast some, I mean, fast television too while you're at it. Some of those are good uh, as the world turn or soap opera, whatever it is. Fast those things. They are not for your good. They are not for your good. So let us know that if you don't do these things, you are unable, you, you don't have the stamina. You don't have uh, anything about God. It's like puts you to sleep. And it ought not to be so. That's what the devil wants. And the Father God, through Jesus Christ, who came and suffered and died for us. A lot of you have watched uh, The Passion of the Christ. Anytime you watch it, remember what he went through. You read the Bible, you know that G this Jesus Christ, God that took flesh and suffered for me. Why should I be sleeping? Why should I allow sickness to, to harass me? Why should the devil be the Lord of my life instead of Jesus Christ be the Lord of my life? See, because we have been sleeping for too long. That's why things are happening. The evil things are happening in our lives. The world will, will throw out a, a, a virus and we catch it. God forbid. But right now, what is the solution? What is the remedy? The word of God. Before you go to sleep, while you wake up, 24-7, the word of God, because you are thinking about the things of God, because that's what God says. Think on those things that are above, not on the things that are beneath. Think of, have Christ consciousness. Let us do that. Holy Spirit, help us. Day and night, everywhere we are, help us to stand fast in this truth that sets us free. In Jesus' name, Father, thank you. Amen. 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 So now we are going to pray with you or agree with you on the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that your healing power, which is made available to each and every one of us through the stripes of Jesus Christ, will come in the life of all of your listeners, all of your children, those who believe you. Because those who believe you are those who eat the fruits of the land. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever disease it is, we come against it now. Because it's not of, it's not of you, it's of the devil. Is it cancer? We command every cancer cell in this body. Whoever has cancer, now let those cancer cells die right now. We command high blood pressure to go. We command diabetes to go. We command liver. Father, the kidney, come out. Come alive. Father, we pray that your finances be healed. We pray that your marriages be healed. We play, pray that restoration will come into your families. We pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the blood of Jesus, the power of the name of Jesus, that they would experience peace. Father, we are not being theoretical here. We say it because we believe it. Yes. Because you say if we believe it, it will come to pass. Father, what we are saying here, we believe it with every atom in our body. Because we know you said if we ask, we shall receive. If we seek, we shall find. If we knock, the door will be open. We have asked. 
We are seeking and we are knocking and we believe we have received according to your word. We back it up with our faith and we thank you for that that it is so done right now in Jesus' name, in the yes. life of our listeners. Forever, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. We back it up with Amen. the faith Holy of Christ in us. Hallelujah. Call up brothers and sisters, those who have not received Jesus Christ, to receive Jesus Christ now as their Lord and Savior and begin Hallelujah. to experience this wonderful life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your grace that has brought us this far and it will continue to lead us. Thank you, Lord, for your love that infolds us. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost working in us. Now, my brothers and sisters, if you have not made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, from the bottom of your heart, close your eyes right now and repeat what I say. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. Father, dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your son, Jesus. I believe he suffered and died for me. I believe he, was, he died and was raised for my justification. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord. And I ask you to forgive me my sins and fill me with the Holy Spirit of God. I believe I receive my salvation and I receive eternal life into my spirit now. And if you have made this declaration, welcome to the kingdom of God, welcome to the family of God. And begin to read your Bible because you, there is no other way out. Now that you have come into Christ, no matter what happens in your life, you have the name of Jesus Christ for your use. You have the blood of Jesus for your use. And how do you use them? Open your mouth and declare them. And then you have the Holy Spirit now in, residing inside you, asking for help every time. He's there 24-7. And start reading your Bible from Matthew, going right. That is our, our power, empowerment. Receive every, everything you see there. Go to Genesis. Read from there, Old Testament. Read the power of God manifested. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes. You start reading your Bible. Because, like we said here last time, the Bible is divided in two places, in three places. What God did... In the Old Testament, what he did when he came in the flesh and what he's now doing through you, and that's in the New Testament, epistles especially. So read your Bible, study it, do what God showed you to do when he came on earth. Start doing it and God bless you. We love we you. love you. God loves you. See you next time. God, God bless, bless you. you. Jesus is Lord, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he loves you.